Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and that is a very shiny face and it's six out of there, yeah, but that will do. And this is the same out of its last video because I'm making the most of being home alone and it's pixel out a little bit more. Lovely. And I'm going to try to film as much as I can in one go because I've read a lot of books I love recently and wrote reviews for and I want to talk to you about those reviews. So this book is The Ocean of the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman and I just had to read that title because I forgot even though it's right here. It's very pretty. But this is a long book title and I love long book titles. As someone who has a drafted book with a long book title, I'm just trying to work out how to fit all those words on the cover, pretty much. And I'm going to start this review off by saying that everything Neil Gaiman writes is just straight up madness and I love it. But this book, I was very confused. <laughs> but I loved it. But I wasn't sure what was happening. I think I was scared at some points. This isn't exactly a horror, but I wouldn't say that it isn't one either. It's about magic and monsters and childhood and nightmares and it hurt my heart in an oddly nostalgic way. The first and final chapters show the narrator as an adult and everything in between is him looking back on an event from his childhood. So it's hard to decide whether this book is for children or adults. I saw someone in another review recommend it for people who started forgetting what it's like to be a child and I think that is the perfect recommendation. So I went into this book completely blind. A friend picked it out for me as a Christmas gift based off the blurb and what she knows I like. So I don't think she's read it either, but it's a very thought out, educated guess of what I would like. I've read two Neil Gaiman books in the past, um, the Graveyard book when I was a lot, lot, a lot, lot younger. Back when I still got books from my local library, they used to get like 10 at a time and read one in two weeks, like back in those days. And I read Coraline last year in uni. And I love how her style is very whimsical and witty and it's extremely visual. That reading his book feels like watching a movie. The writing is very incredibly addictive and it's beautiful. His descriptions of food are the kinds that make your stomach grumble. But then this book has a description of a child pulling an evil worm out of this endless hole in his foot and that makes you feel ill because we love balance. And as I said at the start, the main emotion this book made me feel was confusion. And this is the one book I've read where the confusion didn't rob me of any enjoyment. And I enjoyed the confusion. In some ways I felt like I was the adult version of the narrator, kind of looking back at these like blurry, magical childhood memories. And there's such a dreamlike quality to the story and there's moments where it's hard to tell what's real and what's not. Like this would make an incredible film. And there's this creepy yet kind of beautiful setting in the English countryside and that's something that's very familiar to me as I have lived in the English countryside for my entire 19 years of life. And it's a little lonely, a little isolated, and in some ways it's a world entirely of its own, even though it is in the real world. And the characters are also wonderful. And as somebody who doesn't like children, I didn't think I'd like children characters this much. So we have the very sympathetic narrator, an 11 year old girl who might have been 11 for a very long time, uh, a quirky grandmother, and a quirky mother. Because we love very quirky female family dynamics here. And I realise that this is a review where I'm not saying like anything about the book at all. Because looking back, do I have any idea what was happening? No. But did I enjoy it? Yeah, greatly. The only real negative point I have about this book is that all of the issues in it could have kind of been sorted. Like, it's not a long book, but it could have been sorted in like this many pages. If there was a different character dealing with the problems rather than the little girl. So I know the young boy and young girl, that dynamic makes sense for the story that Neil Gaiman is trying to tell, but logically, life-wise, get someone else to deal with the problems. <laughs> but like, yeah, I get that they left the children in charge, because otherwise it would have ended in 50 pages. And yeah, that's probably the most confusing part of this book. And I gave this four stars because I have no idea what's happening, but I love it. So I do highly recommend this book. I would love if anyone who's read this can just like drop a comment, tell me what you thought. And also recommend me more Neil Gaiman books because I've read two. And I'm a little bit in love with his style and I want to read more, but I don't know where to go because they all seem good. And that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.